free transit is staying in Orangeville, Ontario. The city recently announced it would extend a no-pay transit project until 2027. This move means riders can board all buses in the city without paying a fare. And it's not the first Canadian city to take this step. So is it time for larger communities to get on board? Joining us to find out is Yuval Greenspun. He's the CEO of Left Turn, Right Turn, a transit consultancy firm that's based in the city of Toronto. Good morning. Good morning. How was your drive here? It was not a drive. <laughs> I took public transit to arrive, yeah. Good for you. All right, Canmiller, Alberta, Mont Tremblant, and Quebec, these are all cities who have also tried these free transit programs. But you say this is a model that wouldn't work in a larger city, like Toronto, for example. Why not? So when you look at free transit and you look at where it works, it tends to work at smaller communities. And it does so for a couple of reasons. First of all, in our larger communities, uh, the amount of revenue that's generated by, the, by people paying their fare is a greater percentage, a greater portion of what the agency needs to operate. Versus an Orangeville, for example, uh, when they made the move to go to free fares, their fare revenue, the amount of money going into the fare boxes, equated to around 10 to 15 percent of the money that they needed to operate the service. You look at a TTC, a TransLink in Vancouver, STM in Montreal, they're over 50 percent oftentimes. So not only is their overall the amount of money that they need bigger, the amount of money that they're generating from the people paying fares is right. more substantial. And then the balance of that is made up through taxes in the city? Exactly. So right now, our transit systems are funded predominantly in terms of operating dollars, the money that is used on a day-to-day -day basis to run the service through property taxes. Okay. Uh, some larger U.S. cities have found sort of these middle ground options. Uh, in Boston, however, three heavily used bus routes that travel through low-income neighborhoods were made free. I I want to play for everybody what the city's mayor say after he took a, a ride on them. Here's how it went. I just wanted to thank you for allowing the buses to be free. I can just jump on the bus and just the ease of convenience of not having to wait in the line to watch everybody tap their car. The hope is that the, the bus being free also helps it go a little faster too. You can see people getting on the back door and the front door. In terms of the people that you're so if big cities can't make all of it free because they've got to make revenue through fares, then what options do they have to make it at least a little more affordable or accessible? So, I mean, Boston's example is a good one. There are other cities that have, have piloted or have turned specific routes uh, to free service, whether that's targeting tourists or individuals with low income, uh, seniors, that type of thing. Other, age, uh, other cities and, you know, even many Canadian cities have targeted programs, targeted fair discount programs or targeted uh, free concessions as well for certain communities as well or and, for certain demographics. And basically that's postal code based, so depending on the neighborhood or, or where you live. Well, no. So in, in terms of, for example, Toronto, where we are, you know, there is a low income uh, fare program for, again, for individuals with low income, they have to apply, they have mm -hmm. to provide the information and, uh, and then they can, can get access to that. I think the key for Canadian cities that are exploring those is to make those as accessible as possible, right? To make it easy for people to, 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 to reach that or to have that. The idea of making transit free is obviously very appealing to riders, but what return on investment is there for a city to make it possible or, or desirable for them to explore options like this? So, you know, we'll start by saying that fare collection itself can be, uh, you know, a substantial amount of money that's a, a substantial piece of what's required to operate the system. So just by removing the fare collection, you are making the system itself a little bit more efficient. But more, most importantly, what it does is it drives up ridership, right? It, it, it gets more people onto buses, which, you know, in and of itself is good for us, for our environment, for our economies. All right, CEO of Left Turn, Right Turn, Yuval Greenspan. Great to have you on this morning. Enjoy your transit ride home. Thanks very much. Okay. If you liked that video, make sure to subscribe to the Your Morning YouTube feed where you can find all kinds of new content posted every weekday morning.